Hey everybody, this is Evan Abrams, and in today's After Effects tutorial, we're going to go from Premiere into After Effects, and then maybe back into Premiere, right? Complete the circle. This will help you out with your workflows, and uh, should be pretty neat. If you don't have Premiere, uh, then you won't be able to do this, because a lot of the things here really rely on the Adobe, you know, cross whatever. Anyway, let's get into the tutorial. It won't take very long, and I think this intro actually showed you all of the steps, so... Okay, so we're here in After Effects, and the first thing I want to address is that working from Premiere to After Effects is certainly not the flashiest tutorial you can watch today. It's going to be a lot of, you know, just telling you the technical things you can and can't do. Second thing I want to address is there's no one right way and then conversely a wrong way to do things. Uh, all workflows are sort of on a spectrum of how appropriate they are to the project you're doing. So it might be helpful for you to use some of these techniques at different times during a project and in different ways for different projects. The last thing to get out of the way is that I'm working with Adobe CC that at the time of recording is the latest version of the Adobe suite. So After Effects CC, Premiere CC, you know, everything is fresh and new and fantastic, and you may not have all of the features we talk about, and uh, they may work differently for you. So that is it for caveats. Let's uh, get into working from Premiere to After Effects and probably back again, or whatever. The first thing to know about working between these two programs is that you can import the projects of each into either. You can import footage into After Effects as simply as right-clicking and then going import file, or however you choose to get to this command. Now, when you do that, you can then choose an Adobe Premiere project, like this one, and when you open that up, it's going to give you options to import whatever sequence, you know, when looking into that. It's going to look in there, it's going to say, what sequences can I bring in? You pick one, you bring it in, all right? So let's say we picked uh, this one, called Content, anyway. So you bring in that thing, and it's going to have all the properties of that sequence as it appears in your Premiere project. So it's just going to treat it like footage. It's dynamically linked, meaning, when I say dynamic, if you update the project, it's going to update it here in this project. So that is a way of dynamically linking between the two. Conversely, you can do the exact same thing in Premiere. Uh, you can just go ahead, right-click, import, and then you can import, you know, the project, the .aep, it's going to behave exactly like footage. So, same thing that we did before. So that's, you know, not, not much to write home about there. One thing I will say about this first thing is that there is the possibility of creating an infinite loop of nesting things, right? So, you take a Premiere file, you put it into an AEP, and you take that AEP, you put it back into that same Premiere file. Well, it's going to cause some problems, and it won't let you create that loop. It'll just say, you know, you cannot put this on this timeline kind of thing. That might be confusing, but if you think about it, that would mean that you're updating a thing that is within a thing inside itself. Figure that out. I mean, you have to watch a whole season of Doctor Who to understand that kind of crap. The second way you can work between these two things is by copying and pasting between the two of them. So you've got both of these programs open, you know, you can just tab between them. You could go in here, you could select some footages, like these two, you can copy them. I just went Command-C or Control-C, tab over here, and then uh, select in your timeline, and paste. Boom. Look at that. So. Some things to know about this pasting process. I know, you know, copying and pasting, whoop de woo very exciting. It has created multiple instances of the same uh, .mov here in your project. That's the first thing to know. And those are linked to unique instances of that here. And these have been trimmed to the times that they have on the timeline as relative to the relative starting point, in this case zero, however many seconds from zero, 13.07, uh, that's when this starts, or something like that. Anyway, so it's going to basically just copy and paste the information in here. So this could be helpful when you're on a timeline and you think, ooh, I could use that footage, copy it, paste it. You need clips that are already trimmed to the duration that you want, so you can just take them and put them in. Um, some things that get dicey about this are, what if my composition's frame rate isn't the same as the footage I'm putting in, right? So it's not the ideal way to go. I mean... I know I just said at the beginning there's no best and worst, but this is kind of clunky, right? You can also copy and paste from here into here if you really want. So uh, let me take this solid, uh, copy it, and paste it, and it's going to ask you to pick a color 
Okay, and then uh, you're going to call it this. That's what it's going to be called. And then uh, it will paste it, you know, here in your timeline, which uh, is, uh, you know, it can be fun, you know, sometimes. Um, except that, uh, as you can see, copying and pasting inside this application is uh, not a lot of fun. Anyway, so you can go from one to the other doing that. Now, the last thing that you can do here is make use of Adobe's built-in, you know, find and replace type thing. So check this out. You select these footages and you think, man, I really wish that I could just go ahead and replace these with an After Effects. Oh my god, I could do that! So you're literally just going to click this button here, which will open up After Effects. It'll create a new comp in here. It's a, a linked comp. And then it's got this footage in here. It's the right frame rates, the right duration. It's everything you want it to be. And then you can do wacky stuff to this footage, you know? I mean, you can select it, you can look at tint on it or whatever. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do random things to it here, you know? And then you can like create, you know, new text and da -da -da, just like whatever. Okay, you save that, you go back in here, you look at this footage and boom, it's, it's been changed. You've altered it. Way to go. I will say that when doing this, I like to take these and first uh, sort of duplicate them. So you hold down Alt and then move them to, so you create uh, a copy of this stuff where it used to be. And then you can preserve your originals on the timeline and then replace these with a comp and then move ahead. So that's just a little tip. I mean, like I said, there's no right way, there's no wrong way. This is how I like to do it. All right. So you can create linked comps like that. And in terms of file structure, you would end up with one project file and one project file here that are both, you know, they kind of go with each other. So you'd only have one project file of each with a bunch of sequences and comps in either. Now, I think that's about it for ways to get between the two of them. Some tips here at the end, though, uh, I will say is you rarely want to render unless you have to. Uh, rendering is going to bake everything you've done down into one file. And if you're totally 100% happy with that thing, that's great. But even if you never intend to edit it again and you're happy with the way it's going to appear on the timeline, you're adding an extra render, right? So that's time you can spend doing something else. That's a loss of fidelity. It's taking up hard drive space. Just import the file, man. It's pretty easy, so enjoy that. The other thing I'll say is be aware of your computer's resources when you're having two pretty powerhouse juggernaut resource-hungry things open at the same time, right? So we go here, After Effects, Preferences, and then uh, we're here to Memory and Multiprocessing. RAM reserved for other applications here, you know, on this machine we got 20 gigs installed. Um, RAM reserved for other applications is 3. So the RAM being shared by these two, it's going to tell you, is 17, meaning sharing. You have to share them. So just be aware of your own resource limitations when doing this. Try not to have uh, high hopes and uh, maybe don't do this too often. Close down one then work with the other kind of thing. And I think that's about it for tips uh, working between these two applications. If you have uh, different workflows that you use working between these, I'd love to hear about them in the comments. Just uh, write them in there. And if you have questions about this tutorial, just uh, go ahead and write them in the comments as well. If you've enjoyed watching this and learning about motion graphics, after effects, visual effects, all that junk, then you should subscribe to this channel. I try to make a new tutorial every week. It doesn't always happen, certainly. I get busy, you get busy, whatever. Uh, but that's the goal anyway, is to get you new content all the time that you can use to improve your motion graphics and video projects. Anyway, this has been Evan Abrams. Uh, if you want to talk uh, visual effects and junk, hit me up on Twitter at EC Abrams or uh, get involved on the Facebook page or the Google Plus page. Links to all that is in the description. I really appreciate all the great feedback I've been getting on the channel, so people seem to like it, so I'll keep making it. Anyway, that's about it for me. I'm Evan Abrams. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you around the internet.